Where are you? I was just calling. You want to go outside? Do you want to go outdoors, Toby? Yes? No? Maybe? It is very, very gloomy outside. Gloomy day. That's okay, because at least it's not hot. It's only like 70 degrees outside. It's hard to ask for something better than that in July. You're so sweet, pumpkin. Such a sweet cat. You're so sweet, pumpkin. Oh, come in. All right, there we go. Time to go outside. See how long it takes for the lens to fog up. It is very humid. Oh, the birds are chirping. Yeah, okay, here comes the fog. Gonna have to let this settle for a while. There we go. About half an hour later and lens is no longer foggy. I have a new lens and I'm absolutely loving this lens, but it takes a long time for the fog to come off of it. It's really thick and girthy. It's a Zeiss 16 to 35 millimeter with a 2.8 f value. It's a lens I've wanted since I got this camera, but couldn't afford it. And I uh, found a used one for a good price. None of that has anything. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. This is, I don't want to say a last minute video because it's really not. This is how I had planned on doing things this week. I kind of took the week off with the exception of yesterday's garden tour or i should say two days ago video prior to this one had a garden tour and it's just you know i had family in town and then they left so i was just kind of like getting my stuff back together because it's been a really weird several weeks so uh, i thought though that i would use this video to do kind of a part two of that garden tour because that other one was 57 minutes long i'm trying to include the house plants with everything and that just, it makes these tours take such a long time. Maybe in the future I'll do a separate video for like the house plants and then the things that are like actually in the garden instead of combining them into one. I don't know, just kind of walk around looking at plants and having a good time really. Uh, but I did want to start off by, oh, oops, okay. These are fragile, be careful. Yeah, there are just a few things didn't get to talk about in the other videos so that go through and kind of look at some of the things that I brought out recently you know the plants got left in the garage for a few months longer than i would have preferred but uh, they're out now not looking great because they sat in my garage when it's like 100 degrees outside not comparable to you know the winter time when they're under the grow lights and the temperatures are more mild i can't really cool the garage i can heat it up cooling it that would cost a fortune even more than heating it so we'll look at those plants maybe some cactus and succulents and then there's a garden bed garden bed that's been started up that uh have a look at that too. Be a little bit more loose and casual than the last one though. I do need to find my tripod though. Where's my tripod? How do I lose a tripod? And I'm back under the umbrella. It just, it just keeps on raining, which is great for the plants. If you ever hear me seeming like I'm complaining about the rain, it's not because I don't like rain. It's fantastic for nature, the garden, everything. It's more just getting videos out it can be a little bit frustrating when it just, when it just won't stop been doing this like a lot it's a lot of flooding and everything but i'll take it over wildfires and it's always good to think about the way things could be this is good rain is good not great for getting videos out but it is what it is before i get going since i have a minute to kill here hopefully it'll stop it's just like a miss but it's still too much for the camera i did want to say thank you people have been checking up on me since, since this is a vlogging the health update my graft Feeling much better. The donor site doesn't hurt anymore. It itches like crazy, but I will take that over like not being able to sit up or like sit down without being in tremendous pain. So that's good. A lot of improvement there. And then the graft site on my shoulder is just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I have to wait till I get into the doctor next week and they'll have a look at it and tell me how things are going. There's only nerve endings on the outside of it. So occasionally I can feel the stitches, but the inside, like, I mean, it's looking gnarly, but from everything I understand, it's, that's kind of just the nature of the beast. The umbrella's turning my arm blue. Y'all pointed that out to me in last week's video. I didn't even notice it. So thank you for checking in. Like I said, much better. It's a journey. Gonna take a lot, little while, uh, several more weeks, and there might be another surgery if the, enough of the graft doesn't take, and that's okay. Been there, done that, so uh, I can manage feeling pretty good i did want to give a little shout out there's a gofundme i'm going to link down below 
gonna try and do those things a little bit more often. I don't wanna like constantly be asking people to donate to things, uh, cause I know it's not what y'all are here for. But if you're feeling charitable, then uh, I have a GoFundMe down below for Dylan, Dylan Mall. You may know him, he uh, did video for Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. He went through something not similar to what I went through, but around the same time, ended up being in the hospital for a long time. Some serious issues with his lungs and now Big medical bills, so I'm putting a GoFundMe down there, help Dylan out if you can. No pressure. Now, these are trying times for absolutely everyone. The pandemic going on and unemployment and everything, but I just know, like, I've already gotten two or three medical bills of, like, there'll probably be at least 10 more coming in. I anticipate a lot of phone calls and arguments with my insurance company over the next few weeks. So, uh, you know, if you want to, you can. It's down there. All right, let's talk. Plants, get around the garden a little bit more. Some things I wasn't able to touch on, like my Pindu palm down here. It's the Butia capitata, not from Proven Winners. That's just the pot I have this in. I brought this back from Panama City, Florida a year or two ago, and I almost lost it because I had it sitting in a spot where the drippers were spraying into the crown of the plant and uh, it got bud rot. So I had to treat that and it's coming back. Finally, after a long winter, it's a little bit disappointing that it's coming back with this greenish foliage on it because it was a very beautiful blue, but it does have a nice growth form to it. I'm picky about my pindu palms. I like them to be really short, squat, thick with nice curly, arching, almost spiraling fronds. And this one kind of has that. It's a plant I hadn't mentioned. Had it for a long time. I don't think I've ever talked about it except for when I brought it back from Florida and had it in my suitcase. Nice cold hardy palms. Would grow a lot faster if I were to put it in the ground though, which I just haven't been able to bring myself to do. This just got very wet. The creeping jenny. You know, I used to talk about creeping jenny all the time and I just completely forgot about it on the tour. Maybe because there were like weeds over here. No, 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 no. Because mosquito zone, that's why. There are a lot of mosquitoes out here, so I moved on from this area. But it is being very prolific. I didn't plant it this year. I planted this a couple years ago. If you've been around for a while, you may remember I went on a Creeping Jenny kick. And um, I, I got a lot of it. And it is perennial here. So now it is everywhere, which is cool. I come over here sometimes and I just pluck it out and I'll use it in other planters. So it's a fun thing to have around as far as something that's like mildly <laughs> invasive, I think you could say. So far it's, it hasn't taken over, but considering this all started from just like a couple plants a year or two ago, I'd say it's a, a nifty plant to have around since it just kind of keeps on giving, but it, it also does this and goes crazy. Guess it depends on if you want an abundance of trailers so you can just pluck out and throw into your planters. The cactus and succulents. These were like the main things that I didn't have a chance to talk about because they just came out like maybe a week and a half ago. Also pardon the background noise. The fountain is directly behind the microphone so it's gonna be a little bit noisy there. I just told the person who was helping me to just stick them over here into the shade because you know they have to be acclimated and uh I did, didn't want them to fry and I can't pick them up or do anything with them right now so here they are as far as like the larger cactus and succulents go they, they were in that garage for way too long the main thing to talk about though is this yucca this is a rostrata now you might remember I got a couple of these just a uh, I don't know what was it last winter I think and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of debate on the channel about whether or not to keep them outside because they are sometimes said to be hardy into zone five. I'm in zone six. Uh, I didn't want to, but I, since I had two, I went ahead and I left one out until it got to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to bring it in. That didn't go well. So I think 20 degrees was pushing it. The plant has never seen that before. So I lost, oh, holy freaking ants. Okay, so need to do something about that. So I lost the main crown of the plant, but it is a yucca, so it's going to branch now, which is cool. That's fine, because there's still some trunk on there. It'll probably throw out another branch. I will get this cleaned up at some point and let this start to do its thing out there. The rostratas, which are a great yucca, that beautiful blue color, they don't always branch that often unless there's damage to the crown, which is where we are, and that's okay. It's not hurting anything. So while this is unfortunate, that's all right. Still has some growth coming out. I'm glad I <laughs> brought one in and left one out, though. I would have been devastated if both of if this had happened to both of them. The roadkill cactus, which is really hidden back here in this wax myrtle, 
it has done a ton of growing. I mean, look, it's just, this thing's gigantic. And I would say it is definitely time to repot this plant. I can't do it right now because my body is all weird re recovering, but we'll go ahead and put that on the list of things that definitely need to get done probably within the next few weeks. I have a really big Apuntia back here. This is a Nopales pear, And it, this thing has grown so, so, so much. It's gotten gigantic and it's not potted in that clay pot down there. I need to get that done too. It's just kind of sitting in there so it doesn't fall over. I mostly just grow this particular one to uh, cut up and feed to my animals. The iguana gets some, the tortoise gets a good amount, but I also grow them because I really like them. Now the nopale is supposed to be a uh, thornless prickly pear. The one I got not so much. It's lies. I'm not even actually sure if it is a nopales. It was labeled as that, but, but there are some things about it that make me think it might just be a different thornless variety of prickly pear. You can kind of see these white dots on these pads. Those white dots have what's called glockids on them, and glockids are tiny, teeny, tiny, little bitty hair-like needles that you don't really even see them, but they get in you. They get into your skin, and it feels kind of like fiberglass. It's very unpleasant, and that's why I don't grow a ton of Apuntias anymore, just because I got so sick of dealing with those Glockids. It's not the big needles, it's the little ones. They're hard to get out from under your skin and just not so much fun. This one has an abundance of them, so I steer clear of it except for when I snip little pieces off to give to the animals. I have a variegated one down here that just, I mean, it looks like garbage, doesn't it? It doesn't look good, but that's, again, because it stayed in the garage for way too long. Same thing with this agave, but the agave is starting to bounce back and look much, much, much better. I was a little bit worried about this one, but I think it got brought out just in time. And this is a, it's a perii, agave perii, which are pretty cold tolerant. So not only did this get left in the garage way too far into the summer, it's just kind of the way things are this year. I did also have it outside for a really good chunk of the winter though. I just kept it kind of under like my tiki bar so it would stay dry. But it's still, I think I brought it in when it started dropping to around 20 also. And as long as they stay dry, these can go pretty cold. But it, just like with the yucca over here, I wanted to try and space it out over a few years. I do the same thing with my windmill palms where every year I'll let them go just a little bit colder. And uh, now I'm to a point where I can leave my windmill palms and my mule palms out till it's, the mules I bring in when it's around 16 to 20 degrees. And then the windmills, except for my new ones, those, I mean, probably I bring them in when it's gonna drop below 15, just to be safe. They're in pots, they can go colder than that, but they grow so slow. I'd rather just bring them in so they keep looking nice. Might be nice if I was actually showing you the palm trees I'm talking about. There's the mule palms down there. And then there's one of my windmill palms over here that I've had for a pretty long time. And there's another one right back here, which I talked about a little bit in the last garden tour. It's a plant that I have around and never talk about it during the summertime because I tend to just kind of tuck it back and wait till fall to like really show it off. Look at all the blooms in the hibiscus crazy. This thing just blooms and blooms and blooms. Makes me so happy. One plant to have around. And here's some more succulents that I forgot to talk about that came out and they just, they've been great. <laughs> if there was any plant to leave in the garage and not be able to water, it's the the donkey's tails for sure. This one I think is the El Burrito and this one's just a donkey's tail. You can see it has longer, more stretched out, arching, slightly arching leaflets on there. They've been pretty sturdy. I, these were in an area that has a decent amount of traffic and I think that that actually hardens them off fairly well because I know one of the biggest issues I have with these plants is generally just that they're very tender, that these little pieces fall off of them very, very easily, but they are more sturdy than they used to be. So I think that's a combination of them being a spot where they were probably getting hit by people and things walking around them. And there's the circulation fan in the garage, which is my winter grow space, if you don't know. And uh, I think that having that air moving across them every so often, <laughs> as I say that, a leaf falls off. But usually with these, like if you barely touch them, they just fall to pieces. And this is, they're very sturdy and they're looking great. I put them over here where they're getting like some mid-morning sun and it's pretty shaded in the afternoon. It does get, there's intense sun over here in the afternoon, lots of heat, but this little overhang from the crooked tiki bar 
gives it some shade and then there's a robolini palm right there which helps just a little not much that doesn't give them much shade but they're looking fantastic they are doing very very well a decent amount of growth on them since the last time i showed them on camera it's not a ton of new growth it's just it's a good amount considering that i i haven't watered these since like um probably i'd say the first week of june this video is coming out august 1st today's july 31st so yeah um great sturdy plants they did very well they did fantastic these in the San Severias, troopers my orchid collection on the other hand uh, i don't really have much of one anymore that's not fully true i have plenty of orchids they're just looking pretty sad <laughs> from you know not being watered for a couple of months the person who's been helping me the people who've been helping me you know orchids they take some experience so i am in absolutely no way shape or form upset about this most of my orchids are pretty cheap anyways just like trader joe's walmart orchids or clearance it's where i get a lot of my orchids other than my vandas which i didn't you can't even see them from here but they're all the ones that i show sometimes hanging up on the screens back there that's different they're okay though i brought those out earlier in the year so they're fine the table things are adjusting to being outside the sansevierias are filling back out well i wasn't really concerned so much about the sansevierias because they're such sturdy plants they were pretty shriveled because again they were a plant where i was like hey you don't need to worry about wa watering those that's what i was telling people who were helping me uh because they'll be fine and i just needed their help in so many other areas that i was like don't worry about plants that are going to be okay the uh, peperomia i showed this in last week's vlog when i told everybody that i did get the, the majority of the rest of the plants moved out and i thought this was maybe a goner i stuck it in the fountain and it perked back up well two of the three growths on it perked up and okay sure doesn't look amazing but it's not dead so uh, lower expectations <laughs> the alternative was it's dead and um i'm i mean actually considering looks pretty darn good if you remember how it looked in last week's video that thing was hanging on by a thread and within i'd say i don't know a day and a half sitting with that water running underneath its roots it had started to flush back out and fill back out with the exception of one of the growths which is fine aloe is looking okay this needs a repot i potted this up a few years oh here's another one of the orchids look at it this one might be a goner there's still like one good pseudo bulb in there so i just wasn't ready to part with it but i'm going to have to take this apart and get that pseudo bulb out that so it still has some life in it but it's definitely not the beautiful orchid it was before this was a face hybrid of some sort uh, you can kind of see there's still some life in there not great but it is alive the aloe though that's what i was talking about before i got distracted by the orchid this needs a repot <laughs> definitely needs a repot wouldn't you say i potted this up in a video two maybe three years ago in this blue beach tin and i put some little like fun like sand castles and beach balls in it and it's done very well i mean it's an aloe I haven't had to do much with it but it's grown enough to at this point where i think i should lift it out of here go ahead and take this division out i'm going to give it another week or so to acclimate to being outside before i start messing with it too much like i really shouldn't even be pulling on those leaves this needs to be left alone so it can harden off and get more sturdy and more used to being exposed to the elements but when it's ready i'll pull it divide it up repot it into something larger because it is time it's a beautiful aloe and then i will probably put something else in this pail because i really like this pail and uh, until now i forgot that this used to be pink and i'd spray painted it blue i'll probably put like a little like a cat palm or maybe a parlor palm or something in there and do something similar because i liked how this looked but um yeah this isn't working anymore it's just gotten too big you can see how the growth is all wonky on here from being it was near a window but still it's the front of my house it's northern exposure just it wasn't getting a ton of light but it's alive uh same thing with my rubber plant yeah not looking great but already responding well to being outside so essentially plants that are pretty forgiving were the ones that i hadn't rushed to bring out because i knew medically what was going on at the time and i just didn't want to spread the people who were helping me out too thin i thought that it would be nice to have them focus on keeping the things outside alive and the stuff inside just making sure they get a splash of water every now and then and just hoping for the best and 
uh, other than some orchids, mostly my cat Leia's, uh, everything's doing okay. It's just not ideal, but okay. And I'll take it because they're alive and so am I. So what is there to complain about? I know I don't talk about the orchids that often on this channel. I used to a lot, but they're just kind of a specialized category of plants. So they're kind of like my own little guilty pleasure. But the nice thing about a lot of orchids, if they have a pseudobulb, which is this like swollen base, there's nutrients in there and energy. So sometimes orchids that have a pseudobulb tend to, I don't want to say will be more forgiving, but sometimes the, you, you have better luck with them coming back for you should you find yourself in a situation <laughs> where they start to look like this. Now the more common orchids like the Phalaenopsis orchids that you see all over the place like Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, all the big box stores, they don't have the pseudobulb. So they don't necessarily have that same forgiveness or, or I guess I should say they don't have that like backup built into them. I know this doesn't look great, but I think with a repotting and some TLC that this will be okay. There's some new growth in there. See that? Yeah, it's actually responding very quickly to being outside. So the rest of my orchids, they're still in the garage. They're up really high on a desk or a, a table that is, and it'd be really hard for me to show them to you on camera because I can't lift my shoulder up very high. But uh, even though a lot of them look like they might be dead, I'm still gonna bring them out, give them some heavy soakings and some fertilizings and see what I can revive on them. I have a Sansevieria over here that I don't think I've ever talked about. It's hanging out here with the shovel. I didn't put that there. I don't know why it's there. This is done very well. I had to move it because people who were helping me with the watering just like they could not accept the fact that it doesn't need to be watered. I kept telling them don't water it. And then I would catch them watering it. So I moved it where it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind because the, the, it would just die. It's a Sansevieria and it's still in its nursery pot. And whoever grew this Sansevieria did not pot it in an ideal mix. It's not a terrible mix, but it's not for me because I'm also a heavy handed waterer. I would prefer to be able to water this frequently as opposed to very rarely and have to risk it dying and getting root rot. So I, I will get that transplanted into a soil that drains very sharply. So that way I won't have to worry about this poor thing rotting away if it does get overwatered. Basically I need to protect it from myself and others because of the heavy handed watering, but it's a very pretty variety. It was labeled as a silver, and I'm just going to take the label for what it says and say, all right, it's a silver. I don't know. Its growth is a little bit wonky. That is partially because it's been moved around a lot <laughs> because I kept trying to stick it places where it wouldn't be seen and it didn't work out, but I got it over here and it's doing okay. The cat palms, we haven't even talked about these since I got them back in the winter time and I had ordered them in. They're doing great. They had a little bit of scorch on them when I brought them outside because I did it very impatiently, but it wasn't too much. They're really, it's not so bad. It's just the old foliage. It can all be pruned off. It even, it's flowering. I always enjoy the inflorescence on the palm trees because it's just kind of fun and unique looking, especially on small palm trees. You don't have to worry about it falling everywhere and making a huge mess. The other one is sitting over here with these uh, Virginia creepers that I still have not planted. I have two little ones in here and one big one I planted along my fence last summer, I think. And I haven't given an update on it because I can't see it because <laughs> I have so many orchids in front of it. But um, every now and then I get a peek at it and it's looking good. This is a variegated Virginia creeper. I got these all in clearance a long time ago. I want to say from Wolves or Home Depot. And this cat palm over here is uh, also doing well. I guess that there wasn't much of an update to give there. It needs some pruning from some old foliage, but it's okay. The uh, Fetzias. Japonicas, false aurelias. They are fantastic plants. I love these. Great potted plants. Hardy, too. I have grown these in the ground before and they die back in the wintertime, but they still come back to being about the size. If that's something you wanted to do, you still get these fun leaves that come back for you every year here in zone six, anyways, with some mulch and in a well protected spot. But this one right here, the variety is called Spider. You can kind of see that it had some gorgeous, beautiful variegated foliage on it, but it appears to be reverting, which I didn't know that these did. I've never had this happen before with this plant. I've never seen it happen, uh, but apparently it can. There's still new growth coming out that's got the variegation on it. So I've been trying to figure out if I should just cut off this piece right here 
that doesn't have the variegation on it. I mean, I may as well, because without it, it's just like the regular one, and I already have a regular one, so why would I? Yeah, I'll probably clip that off, and I could probably even root the piece that I cut out from here, I think. I don't know why I couldn't, and then have another one, so I might do that. Okay, now behind me, there's an area of the garden I've never really shown you guys. You've seen a little bit of it. It's what I refer to as my shame garden. Y'all saw my dump garden, which is now the pollinator garden back there. I think it's safe to call it a pollinator garden, not just a dump garden anymore. I have an area in my yard that I just don't really pay attention to because I'm never over there. You can't see it. And it's, so it's just, it's like I said, it's the shame garden. I'll show you. Here it is. It's just kind of like a really dark, gloomy spot that I've never bothered to put much effort into. With the exception of these needle palms. I've had these for a very long time. This, I think this is a sand cherry here. It might be a palm. It needs to go. It's um, It's been <laughs> going downhill for a while. Years ago, I did show this in videos because I used to hang my orchids over here. It's a vandaceous orchids. But this maple tree has grown so, so, so much that there just isn't light over here for it anymore. And it's an old tree. So it just, it needs to go. I thought that I was able to like bring it back to life. I gave it a big prune and it put up some new growth, but then I, it had like some branches coming out from here and I was hanging the plants that don't like the heat. So these are the pansies, which you might remember from springtime. They don't like the heat. So I moved them into the very deep, deep shade this time of year. And when I hung them up, the branch I put them on just like it was hollow on the inside. I didn't see any signs of termites, so it wouldn't shock me, but basically I think this needs to go. And I probably won't replant anything in the middle. I don't think I need to with these needle palms here. The needle palms have done wonderfully here. This is a spot that was always troublesome in the past. I could never get anything to really grow and do well in this spot because it would be really shady during the summertime and then just blazing, blaring sun during the wintertime. So uh, I couldn't really do much with it. There are, you know, boxwoods and things like that. I tried boxwoods. I tried, I tried boxwoods. I tried azaleas, rhododendrons, many, many, many things. None of them worked. <laughs> they just scorched. I think that like the fall time, the leaves fell too quickly maybe. So it was just too quick of a transition into the sun. They always scorched. The needle palms, however, they've done very well. Now they might not be the most beautiful plants, but I really like them. I think they have fun foliage on them. They get some neat little flowers that you can't even see them right now, but they get neat flowers that show up from down along the trunk that they have and they're evergreen and it's a palm tree. I'm in zone six and they like pretty much effortless. I don't have to do much with them. When we drop below like five degrees Fahrenheit or if there's going to be an ice storm, I have frost bags that I put over them just to be safe because it would cost a fortune to replace these. I've had them for a long time. When needle palms hit like two feet tall and then you get to three feet tall and four feet tall, these are about three and a half feet tall. When they get that big, they cost a fortune because they grow very, very, very slowly. Like I said, they are doing well over here. It's fun to see the tips of the palm fronds, the fan fronds when you're sitting inside. I'm saying that I need to do some screen repair there. But yeah, essentially this is just an area that I haven't focused much on. This is what's on the other side of the garden over here that I showed not too long ago where the people who were helping me planted a bunch of hostas that I'd gotten on clearance and put them in around this bird bath and put them in under this Rose of Sharon hibiscus here, which also needs a heavy prone because it's like starting to get kind of leany and wonky in that direction. This area also got filled in with a bunch of ostrich ferns. So they don't look good. They don't look great. See them? They don't look good. These were dug up from that area I showed in the last video, the garden tour that had all the gingers in it. There were probably about 24 or 30 ostrich ferns that got lifted from that area. And uh, here they are. Doesn't look good. I don't expect them to look good this year. Next year will be a different story. And they're actually, they went downhill when it got up to close to 100, which was like two days after they got planted. But they're already responding to having lots and lots of water and they're going to bounce back. So I just need to come in here and get all this old stuff cut out of them. But you can see new growth coming out. And eventually those will kind of line the edge of this garden that's over here. It's really just an area that I've filled in with mulch and building up over the years because this was just rock solid clay here before. It's just an area to line the pathway. 
this extension cord is buried. That's something I've been working on getting dug up. Same thing with that one. So there's just a wall of ostrich ferns now that'll go across this bed right here. And the only point of that is just to kind of create a separation between this path, which leads down to all the stuff over here for the pool, and then the lawn. <laughs> lawn. It's mostly just uh, wild violets at this point, but there used to be grass there. Lots of moss. That's going to be nifty when I, I get back into doing the terrariums and some other things. I have a big area here that needs to be cleaned up, and I need to get a shrub in there of some sort. And then over here, it's just this is kind of my storage spot for... I have some hanging baskets, plants that I've cut back because it was getting really hot, and then... Uh, again, the needle palms. So yeah, it's not beautiful, but it doesn't need to be a beautiful area. It's where the grill is. It's where, like, it's just, you never see it. But I think it's nice to go ahead and have it a little bit more spruced up. And I think that the ostrich ferns will do really well over here because I've talked about them before in videos. And uh, where they were near the side of the patio, they would just scorch. <laughs> they look kind of like that, actually. In the summertime, like around July, they'd start to look pretty crummy. But in the early spring, so like, I don't know, mid-March, late March, something like that, that's when these start to like really put on a show and they'll do that until midsummer. And then they would cook in the sun. It just got too hot for them there near the pavement. Ostrich ferns can take a good amount of sun. The spot right here under the maple tree, they will get plenty of sun up until like mid-May. So there will be lots of sun to go ahead and wake them up and have them looking nice and lush. They'll fill in this entire area. I'll have to keep them pulled from the front here where there's kind of a path, used to be a path, and then they'll be in the shade when everything's flushed out, especially this rose of share in here, this hibiscus. They uh, tend to not wake up and uh, put new leaves out until like mid to late May, not until things warm up. So there will still be a good amount of light over here for them until... Like I said, mid-May, maybe early June, and when things get hot, there'll be shade. So that it works out. Doesn't look great this year, but it's just kind of fun to have a new bed started where you can slowly add to it over the years. It's not really an area where I would be like, I'm going to give this a huge makeover and just have it be a whole new glorious area at one time. Because one, that's not practical. That would cost a fortune. Two, I can't do it because my body's, you know, the healing and everything. And three, nobody, you never come over here. I never come over here unless it's to mess with the pool stuff. So it doesn't need to be like a big grandiose garden, but I just thought it would be nice for it to look better. <laughs> so uh, working in that direction. I also have my bird feeders over here. I have a pile of bird feeders down there I need to clean and get set back up. It's just, you know, it's a new area and um, it's going to take some time to look good. That's alright, that's how a lot of gardens go. I'll get those old fronds cut off of there and they will start to look better over time. I would like to put a fountain in right here. I don't think I'm going to. Partially one just because I'm attached to this bird bath. It's gaudy and tacky. I am aware, but it was a gift and I have some like sentimental attachment to it. And I haven't been able to find a different dish to put on top that still has that shell shape that would hold enough water for a fountain. At one time, long, long time ago, I had this in a spot that I had dug out. So water was able to come up and run through this dolphin here, but I don't do that anymore, obviously. This area is not dug out. It'd be really hard to dig this out very far. This is very compacted soil underneath this layer here. I'm slowly working on it every year. Add some compost and some gypsum and things like that to help break things down and enrich the soil, but it's not practical to put a basin underneath there. But this is right across from that pool box which has an outlet, which is prime territory for a fountain. It would be so easy to run a cord under there. I also never come over here, so I spend the money, and during the winter time I'd have to have a big cover over it, which wouldn't look very nice through this bay window here. This window, there's a cat tree in this window, and that's usually when I keep the bird feeders full during the winter time because the cats like to hang out and there are just birds everywhere over in this area during the winter time so it gets more utility then but the fountain would just be a big I don't know I just don't think it would look that good for a big chunk of the year and then I'd have to maintain it there's leaves everywhere eh, something I'll think about like it would look cool but do I feel like messing with it I don't know I mean, obviously, I guess not really, right? Otherwise, I'd probably go ahead and do it. This spot over here also has a banana that I just tossed over here like five years ago and haven't touched it since. Same thing with this ginger that's back here. I haven't touched it. It only put up one stalk this year, and it's doing its thing. I have some 
uh, greenhouse panels, actually. These go over my big fish tank. I just brought them outside to give them a scrub. That's why they're leaning against the door. They need to go back in the house. But down here, so in addition to that green bottle that I can't quite get to right now, I'll have to get somebody else to get that or find my pickup stick thing. But there's a sable palmetto right here. I planted this years ago. I don't know, eight years ago, maybe even longer. Oh, we got weeds over here too. That's fine. I think we've already established this isn't a beautiful area in the garden. But this palmetto, it was just a seedling and it's just kind of set still. It hasn't done much. It put up a few fronds a year. It's not a super sunny location. It gets some afternoon sun. I also just like haven't messed with it. I really haven't messed with this area at all. It, it, clearly, that's what I've been talking about. That's why it's my shame garden. But it is doing some fun things this year. Like it's actually putting up a fan-shaped frond as opposed to a strap frond which is nice. It's put one up a few weeks ago and now it's putting up another. So I'm actually starting to see some growth out of this thing. So um, I guess I'll step my game up and start taking better care of it. It's just been one of those plants where it's done fine, shockingly, since the sable palmettos are not super cold hardy. even they're pretty tough, but not into zone six, but it's finally doing something. So that's exciting. I know it doesn't look like much. But it's like, hey, after eight years, you're finally starting to kind of look like a palmetto. That's good. At least it looks like the little weedy ones. I'm sure all y'all down in Florida are tired of picking up from around your fence lines and everything. But up here, that's a treasure. And I'm excited to have that growth. There's a fly trap. I feel bad about it, but the flies have just been unbelievable and they bite. So had to do something with them. Okay, that's enough of the shame garden. That wasn't easy for me. I hope you enjoyed it. But while I call it a shame garden, it's also an area that's just full of potential. Okay, what else? I showed you the shame garden, which is just a new garden, really, a garden that I haven't done anything with over the years. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I've been distracted by a very pretty butterfly. It's prettier in person. That white spot's more of a blue color. Anyways, I think that that's about everything. I have plenty to do out here. I need to do some pruning here on these calicaceas. And then my big banana clump down here at the end by the driveway. I need to get in there and do something with that because it's just, I don't like for them to get too full. I don't like when the leaves are going down too far. It needs to be some air that can move around inside of these guys. So I'll just have to get up in there. There's a little path. I can walk up through here and get in there and do some pruning. Oh, this canna, I mentioned in a video, I don't know, a few vlogs ago at some point. I mentioned that I would find the name of it and I have its tag here. It's called Red Tiger. I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it's just a really pretty canna. The variegation on it is really intense. It's way more intense than just like on the regular Pretorias. And this canna will have nice big red flowers as opposed to the orange that you would normally see on the Pretoria. So that clump hasn't been down here in the ground for too terribly long. Just like, I don't know, a couple weeks maybe. So it has some establishing to do. I put it right here because it's a canna that I'll probably lift the first winter that I have it. And so having it in front of the palm tree seemed like a good idea since this palm tree is going to have to be lifted out of here in the winter time and there will probably be people like tracking around in here messing with the plants and stuff like that. So something that I can cut back down to the ground that made sense to go right here for now. Uh, I don't plan on leaving it there over winter. I could, I suppose, but uh, I don't know have to wait and see because the cannons usually survive in the ground here just fine as long as they get mulched. Since it's something that I'll have to be cut back down to the ground for the winter time if in the fall when the people are here who take this palm tree away to the greenhouse if when they are here they trample it and smash it and everything it'll be okay because it'll probably only be like a week or two before I would cut it back down to the ground and mulch it anyways. So there's that that's the red tiger. Can you even see it? Can you see it? Kinda? Canna Red Tiger. There's the name. I got this from a Plant Delights Nursery. They're in North Carolina. They have a great website. Lots of cool plants. They have a lot of first introductions. It's a fun website to explore because they have a lot of plants that you don't usually get to see. They'll have them sometimes a few years before they hit the market and become popular. And that has its pros and its cons. Sometimes it turns out the plants aren't really all that fantastic. There might be some things about them that aren't desirable, but usually they trial them before they sell them and do it responsibly. So the plants usually end up looking pretty good. This is what I was talking about in here though. You see how the, it's just so full of leaves. I'm gonna get in here and try and thin this out and open it up a little bit more because it's just, 
it's too much it's too dense need to get that cleaned up in there but that's something i will work on next week and looking at the forecast i think i have to move those fish inside my oscars that i showed in my last video looking like it's actually going to be pretty cold these next few days like 10 days the lows are going to be in the mid 60s to mid 50s which is very unusual here for this time of year but it happens sometimes sometimes we have a few chilly days in august and then september will like cook you i don't know is what it is i'm not complaining about it the goldfish that are inside will come out and the oscars that are out here they'll go back in where they belong that should be fun it's always fun trying to catch fish with your non-dominant hand that'll be interesting and that break the break from the heat that's gonna be pretty nice for me since i'm not supposed to be out here doing anything when it's hot and really i'm not supposed to be doing anything period i'm supposed to sit over here in this little fan cave and stay cool but if it's gonna be cool out then i can st like i can do little things i won't overexert myself don't worry people are always saying don't overdo it i'm not overdoing anything believe me i just sit what i do what's jeff doing if you're ever wondering he's probably just sitting just sitting down playing on my phone or with my camera or with the computer like there's just it's a lot of sitting that's okay life's good and there's nothing to complain about the rain has subsided there's even like a hint of blue in the sky which i'm very happy about it's been a very gloomy few days and, but the rain's good been good to have some rain plants have been enjoying it i think though this is where i should wrap it up because that last garden tour from a, just the previous video this one it was long enough this one's probably already long enough so I'm going to go, oh, I love when I get to pull the old sheaths off these guys and you get the new ring. Get the new ring? Oh, look at that. Lots of snails and slugs. I'm not surprised by that. And then Tucker, he gets to come out and play with the fronds. He loves playing with these things. So yeah, time to go. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. I'm looking forward to a week of being able to do some mild work outside. Anything that's like, waist level and doesn't require lifting anything i'll be able to get that done and it'll be fun and you know the whole youtube drill social media is down below and do the like thing subscribe and hit that notification bell i'd appreciate it makes a big difference for the channel for the videos so thank you and yeah it's time for me to go i'm going to try not today there's too many mosquitoes out today and it's very moist out i want to get back here and get that tree fern out and probably repot that philodendron Maybe, I don't know, it seems pretty happy. So I'm like, maybe I shouldn't mess with it. But it does need a repotting. I'd rather get it done than wait till next year and then be like, oh, I should have done this less. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. We do that with our plants sometimes. We just wait a little bit too long with the plants that don't need a lot of attention. And sometimes regret it later. So I'll probably go ahead and get that done because it's a little thing. One of the little things that I can get done. Oh, no, no, no. I forgot about the front porch. The planter's on the front porch. What's wrong with me? Yeah, the front porch planters. I didn't update these in the last garden tour. I just completely forgot about it. Sorry, flipping the camera all over the place. I did these in a video, I don't know, May, I think. And they are doing well. The dwarf, <laughs> dwarf sweet potato vine is um very big which is what I kind of thought might happen. So it says it only gets three feet long and it's probably pushing three and a half to four feet. So I'm not gonna say it's a lie yet, but since there's still a few months of growing left, we will see. The impatience that are in here, these impatience are doing well. I need to do some adjusting on my drip though. Like you can see this azalea back here. It's under this magnolia. It's looking pretty thirsty, so I have to, make some changes but that's really not a very big deal i just i don't have a hose or there is a hose but it's broken so i have a new hose in the mail so i can't hand water anything over here everything's reliant on the drip right now so that's just a little thing that i need to handle probably i'll just tap in and put another emitter in there because i just don't think i have quite enough going on there to get everything in that pot i also need to come in here and cut back the alyssum but these cooler temperatures have them going again and flowering so i may just go ahead and give it a week and then give them a cut back because when it gets really hot they tend to get kind of nasty looking anyways but right now they're doing their thing and starting to bloom again it smells nice so i'll leave those i'm gonna let the sweet potato vine do its thing and i don't know we'll see what happens they still look nice things are hey pumpkin 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 you want to say hi hi bite 
Yeah, hey, Pug, and you so sweet. Yeah, don't come too close to the door. You know the rules. Cats aren't allowed outside. You stay there. This windmill palm is doing wonderfully. Lots and lots and lots of new growth in there. This is one of the new ones, so it will not be staying outside very long this winter at all. It'll be coming in, and then every year, like I talked about earlier, I'll leave it out a little bit longer. This windmill palm, eh, it's putting out some new growth, but it's not as vigorous as the other. This side of the front porch also doesn't get quite as much sun as the other. I should actually probably flip these and put this one over there and move that one over here, but you know i'm not supposed to do the thing so it's fine it, everything looks okay how it is you can definitely see a difference in how the impatience are growing on this side so you see the flowers are more open they're more happy looking the petals are nice and green they aren't crimped or washed out faded anything like that whereas this side they don't look bad but i can just tell that like this side of it is getting a bit too much morning sun not much it's like right on the cusp so I think it's okay it's not the sun's shifting, the angle of the sun's shifting a little bit, that I think that it's going to be okay. But for a few weeks, right towards right around when summer hit, I think that it was just a little bit too strong for it. It'll be okay, though. Okay, now it's time to grow. I always forget to talk about these, so I'm glad that I remembered this time. Hope everybody's doing well, and of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.